You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christopher Hines hosts a great podcast called Pod Central. Chris, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. We help you launch, grow, or monetize your podcast. We even help those podcast business owners out there grow their agencies and get more clients. This is a place where you come to learn everything podcasting. Wow. Where can people subscribe? Search for the podcast wherever you listen to your shows or find me on Twitter at Chris Podcasting and I can send it to you directly or go to marketingpodcasts.net. I think it's really important that entrepreneurs understand how critical it is that they humble themselves not to say, well, I believe in my idea so I can sell it. If you do not have, if you do not study, and if you do not pursue technique, mm -hmm. you're going to do an ordinate amount of talking and not anywhere near the amount of closing or conversion you could do. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs in the Media podcast. I am here with Coach K, John Klimshin. Did I say that correctly? The first time. Congratulations. Wow. So there's, there's like, there's seriously, unless you call Y a vowel, there's no vowels in his name. Hey, well, everybody has a cross to bear. Mine was that my last name had no vowels. It, it actually, it, oh, it does. Because Y in this case is the vowel. So, but it's. It, it's people are it's, unaccustomed to seeing that as the vowel in a name, right? Yeah. So what I love is I'll check into a hotel and they will ask me my name. I'll spell it, and they'll look at me and say, "Are you John?" And my response is, "Do you have another Clemson staying here?" Because <laughs> if you do, <laughs> we're probably related. Yeah, there's probably no one. Yeah, exactly. Because with a name like Goldstein, we're like the Smith of Jews. There's there's like literally everyone's in the Jewish religion either Stein or Goldstein or Goldberg or something right. like that so or feld or feld there's a lot of felds yeah or farb yeah. oh there's a farb yeah, there's some farbs even i have my, my wife's main name sideman apparently is a very common jewish name i had no idea oh so yeah um we, we're all off to the races here i love it what are you gonna do so john is a musician yes, mm. he is the founder of the clemson method spelled just like clemson with no vowels that's so, right I'll link to all everything so people don't have to try and figure out how to spell Klimshin. So I'll link to everything Thank in the show notes. That's a good thing. And you are the library, a self-proclaimed librarian of uncommon knowledge, the professor of profundities, a ninja listener. I love it. I love it. That is the best LinkedIn little subtitle. Oh, that's great. Thank you. I love it. And you're based on Idaho, right? Yes. I live in Southwest Idaho, uh, not far from the great city of Boise. So you still have good internet, thank God. <laughs> we we do. Hey, we got we got fiber out here, yo. This is wow. Idaho is one of the best kept secrets in North America, and it's so, gorgeous uh, there too. From what I hear, it's like it's a like God's country. It's stunning. It, I mean, you know the the national forest and the rivers and the lakes and the the uh, the canals and the the reservoirs and the mountains and the trees and I could go on and I could and go on and on. on. Exactly. You know, it, it, I I, I want to go so bad. It's just, it's gore. It sounds so gorgeous. And I'm sure like when you went near a break from work, you were in the best place to decompress. Grab your fishing rod and just go out into the wilderness. Yeah. And since or your I don't backyard. Fish, well, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Since I don't fish, I just bring the fishing pole and I sit next to the river and uh, the day goes by. Exactly. You kick back and relax. I don't so put I, bait on the hook. I don't do nothing. Just relax. <laughs> Honey, I'm going fishing. And she's like, sure you are. Sure, sure you, are. you are. Exactly. So, John. Yes. You coach entrepreneurs and business owners on the sales process. Yes. On how to be a better salesperson and, you know, how to excel at sales. So how did you get started in this? I mean, what's your background? Well, uh, I'll get into that very quickly. I, I want to yeah. make the distinction that, yes, I do work with salespeople and enterprise and, yeah. and entrepreneurs who need to sell. One of, I think, the great gaps is between where a company is founded and started Mm. and how they build their sales team. So my most successful and most consistently selling book over several years has been about mm. that 
that what I call the impossible profession, which is sales management. Mm, so this sounds tough. It, it, well, here's the yeah. thing. It's, it's like herding cats, right? It <laughs> is salespeople are unique and wonderful and psychotic and, and confusing and inspiring yeah. and hardworking and, and brilliant. And managing that, it, 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 people say, well, that's an oxymoron. It really is not because the goal is not to tell salespeople what to do because most salespeople know what to do. The role of the entrepreneur or CEO or VP of sales or whatever the title is, mm -hmm. is to help those people be more effective. Mm, now, keywords effective right there, yeah. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Amy Rosenberg hosts a great podcast called PR Talk. Amy, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. So we interview thought leaders and sometimes the media to not only learn about our jobs better, but to expand into new areas that tie in well with PR. But we also explore kind of what we think is more interesting so things like work-life flow, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and just broader topics like that. Very interesting. Where can people subscribe? We're at prtalk.co, marketingpodcast.net, or you can search for PR Talk wherever you get your podcasts. You heard her. Go subscribe. In effect, I'm, I'm a mercenary sales guy. I want to close as many deals for as much profit as possible. Mm -hmm. And the thing about the profession of selling Mm -hmm. is that it is a performance profession. I think it's really important that entrepreneurs understand how critical it is that they humble themselves not to say, well, I believe in my idea so I can sell it. If you do not have, if you do not study, and if you do not pursue technique, mm -hmm. you're going to do an ordinate amount of talking and not anywhere near the amount of closing or conversion you could do. Wow. So yeah. In my time when I was mentoring startups with NYU, in my time when I did 107 episodes of Your Startup Advisors podcast, yeah, the language was about how do we get from where we are, whether it's seed money or we're, you know, we got 30 customers and now we have to hire two more people or wherever you are on the journey, understanding the intersection between sales and leadership, Seth, I think is critical. And I think that's it what is. brought you and I together on LinkedIn is we both commented on stuff and found each other. And then we started commenting on each other's stuff. And I think you're a funny guy too. You have a good sense of humor. So it's like, I'm like, this, this guy sounds like someone I want, I want to follow because you talk about sales. But what I like about what you do is you talk about sales in a very effective, there you go, and a very it. friendly manner. Like you don't take yourself too seriously. It's not like you do this, bun up, you know, and kind of go that way. You right. have fun with it. And you know, if you don't have fun in what you do, it's going to be a slog. And there's that old adage, which is kind of overused now. But, you know, if you do it something you love, you don't work a day in your life. That's kind of a little BS because you all doing work. But, you know, well, you're at least enjoying your work so it's not as tedious. Well, here's the thing. We enjoy work when the work is rewarding. Yeah. We don't like having a job because job is an acronym for, ju acronym for just over broke. <laughs> I love that. And it's, and it's not just about the money. If people are not getting satisfaction from their work, mm -hmm. then they're stuck in a job. And yes. salespeople, there are many salespeople that have jobs. I don't want a salesperson to view what they do as a job. I want, it to, I want them to view it through the lens of a creative person because you must be creative in order to sell. You have we to are be. creating relationships. We're creating financial Inter exchanges. Mm -hmm. I don't like transactions because it's one and done. Most of the people I work with are enterprise salespeople, relationship salespeople, large dollar transactions. And the relevance to your audience in that mm -hmm. is number one, the difference between what you charge today and what you could charge is the nerve you have in pressing a button on the keyboard there for you your go. prices. There you go. Exactly. Also, say, there's there's a keyboard whatever, there. Martin, What's That's that? the key word that you've said multiple times is relationship. Yeah. The sales is about a relationship. It's not necessarily about the transaction. I mean, it's always about the transaction at the end. But if you build the relationship, you're more apt to get that transaction and then some. And people don't realize that. That people are, well, Seth, you're paying all this good content. What's the ROI? I'm like, it's not ROI. It's, it's the relationship. It's with Ted Rubin. You know Ted Rubin? Sorry, I don't. He coined the phrase return on relationship. 
Which, I like that. Exactly. And he, yeah, I think it's even trademarked even. He, I mean, he really runs with that. <laughs> and I love it because it's really, it's the return on relationship. It's, you're building the relationship. People trust you. And they want to work with you. And people buy from people they like. I, I, I walk people through something that I call the awareness funnel. And I'll give it to you in, you know, the 30-second version. It's a larger Absolutely. conversation. But here's the yes. thing. If you and I did not, were not aware of each other, then we were outside of the awareness funnel. In other words, I'm unaware of Seth and what he does and how he can help me. Yeah. Once you and I have at least one live conversation, not an exchange of emails, but like what we're doing today, we're yes. talking with each other, not at or to, but with each other. Once we talk with each other, hmm. now you are aware of me. Should you and I have three or more live conversations, now you've become familiar with well, me, okay. right? So yeah. the funnel is getting tighter because it's a smaller universe. We yeah. start with unaware, then we move into the awareness funnel to aware of me, then we get deeper and we can get into uh, familiarity. Yes. And after familiarity, conversation five to 500 is the continuum of the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a linear, ongoing, ever expanding thing. And at some point, and we never know when, at some point, trust drops its anchor. Now, as someone who's a boat owner and I love the water and I grew up on boats and the whole thing, that that has significance for me because once we drop the anchor, it means, okay, this is where we want to live for a while. Yeah. This is the view we want to have. Mm -hmm. This is what we want to hear and see and think and smell and eat and believe. So yes. people buy from people that they like. It, it is, I mean, that's time immemorial. Yeah. The To me, the greatest piece of literature ever written on the profession of selling is over 50 years old, five zero, wow. and it's a $7 paperback. Oh, wow. And it's still in print, though, so that's even better. 50-year-old. It's still in print. Oh, I think it's going to be in print for a long time. It, I hand out copies. It is, it's called The Greatest Salesman in the World. Oh, I've heard of that. Hey, I've heard of that. Yeah, it's a good it's Fantastic. It's yeah. written in parable form, which helps a lot of people because it's it starts out with there once was a person as soon as we hear that we think that we're that person or we know them mm -hmm. you can relate so to it. Since, since it's told in the form of a parable we can keep it at arm's distance but we can emotionally relate to it which is a great example for salespeople who need to tell a story and then follow that story with questions relevant to the listener mm -hmm. That to me, that is that that's a little bit of um, it's like seven ingredients of the secret sauce of professional selling. I love it. I love it. So John, you've been a really consummate entrepreneur for years now. You know, and, and twenty three. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I mean, you were in the Navy, which is kind of what you think when they like they like you to think as a group. But they also like you to somewhat, you know be kind of entrepreneurial a little bit like they want you to think for yourself but with the group in mind but um what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur for any of those, those <clears throat> three years the uh, the best thing about being an entrepreneur is that you are regularly reminded of why you do this and i have never lost sight of my why which is oh, freedom. Awesome. freedom yeah absolutely uh, and and guess what freedom has a price yeah. Uh, you've got to earn that freedom. Absolutely. And when you do earn it and when you enjoy it and when you recognize it, you there, there's that return on relationship. There's that return on investment of time, effort, sweat, blood, sacrifice, and dark nights of the soul. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I wore a path in the carpet in my living room. Oh, from, I bet, yeah. Walking back and forth at two o'clock in the morning, wondering, how am I going to do this? Yeah, exactly. And that actually is the perfect segue to the other side. What keeps you up at night? What's the scariest thing about being an entrepreneur? Freedom. It's this, I know it's amazing. It's the same <laughs> darn thing. It's, it is. it's the thing that makes it so wonderful. It's also like, uh, crap. Number one, I can't get unemployment because I'm this, there's no safety net. There's That's literally right. you are a tightrope and you're walking across the Grand Canyon and you fall, you're it's on you. at least going to be hurting. <laughs> and uh, you're going to hurt and no one is going to run and come and pick you up and lick your wounds. You know, the, yeah. uh, I, I, 
wanted to be a writer since I was very young. And one of the reasons I wanted to be a writer was that I had read great science fiction, Ooh. Arthur C. Clarke, Isaac Asimov, yeah. uh, and my idol, Ray Bradbury. Oh, he's good. Later yeah. in life, much later in life, had the opportunity to actually meet the man, was stunning. Oh, wow. Uh, and I read after I met him, several years after I met him, he was in his early 80s. And he was asked in an interview, how do you feel about risk? And this Ooh. was his response in his early 80s. He said, every day I jump off a cliff and I build my wings on the way down. Oh, I love that. Isn't that fantastic? Oh, he's, 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 clearly, came from that he's clearly a writer. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. I, I clearly, I mean, that's some. That's that's something that you know, like a writer would come up with. That, that's sure. like, you can envision that. Like, it's also like building a plane while you're while you're flying it. That whole thing. Like, uh, yeah, changing engines on a seven forty seven while it's in flight. That's uh, the founder and the CEO of Salesforce. He says that's what we're doing here every day. And oh, I and I love that terrifying. because it, that kind of metaphor. Right. Yeah. It gets people's attention. So yeah. as an entrepreneur, solopreneur, moving into entrepreneur, moving into, you know, a, a director of an organization, yes. really important very early on to identify what it is that you are exceptional at, mm. as well as the things that you're not very good at, because those things that you're not very good at, get someone else to do them. Yep. Do what you're good at and hire for the rest. That's it. That's my whole, that's whole, my whole mentality with my Goldstein Media Company is that it's like, I'm okay at design. Oh, but Olivia is so much better. Mm. And it's like, do I want to do I rock this website? Absolutely. I'll manage the crap out of it. But she will do so much better of a job in the end. It's worth every penny. And well, because there's that, yeah. opportunity costs that people refer to. Here's the thing. It, 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 the older I get, the more aware of this I am. The clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. So if, if I do truly have more time behind me than ahead of me, I want to make sure that I am investing my time for the greatest return. Now, that doesn't mean that I have to earn money every waking minute because freedom is the primary both driver and objective, mm -hmm. right? Since it's the both, both the primary driver and objective for me, that means that I select how I spend my time. Mm -hmm. So the question is, do I want to spend my time doing something that I don't, I know in my heart and soul is not going to be top quality mm -hmm. or do I spend a couple of bucks and have someone deliver top quality? Because here's, here's the gift that we are giving. Number one, we're giving the person who's good at it, the gift of being able to apply their trade. Absolutely. And we're giving the ultimate recipient the best that we can identify or offer. Mm -hmm. That's and that to me that it, something very related to freedom is power, and and power is not influence. Power is a, an ability to be centered and stay within myself, so that I do not have those dark nights of the soul saying, "Should I should I hire someone to do this or should I do that? Should I keep trying to learn how to do that or should I just you know get someone in here to help me for a couple of hours?" And and I don't mean to keep on this track, but here's the thing. I have worked with small organizations, five, eight people, where the CEO was convinced that they were the only one that could sell what they sold, what they had, mm -hmm. and sell it effectively. And after, after the 30-minute argument, I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't think I can help you. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a bet with you that if in the next 30 days, one of these people sells more than you do, that you will get out of their way. If they don't, then I will get out of your way. I love it. 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 Uh, uh, that's brilliant. And, that's, and it's a great way to kind of spark people, you know, in the right way and all that. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? And this can be physical or metaphysical. My faith. Pieces. Your faith, absolutely. Uh, I, w I have not been given any of the gifts that I am daily the uh, afforded the opportunity to share. You know, I'm a musician. I play out five, six times a month. Oh, wow. That that gift, I didn't invent that. I did not insert that into myself. I've, I've played drums, percussion, flute, baritone horn, um, bass guitar, guitar, and now I'm struggling with piano. 
I'm really struggling with it because it's way too much fun. But here's the thing. It's a fun struggle. Yeah. It's a fun struggle. And each, number one, I've read for years that the older you get, the, the, the best way to stave off any kind of dementia or Alzheimer's is to learn something new. Yeah. So learning new songs every week, learning another instrument when I can. Why? Because I've been given this gift and it is up to me to share it. So Love my it. faith is about the, the books that I have written, the, the training that I've provided, the whatever entertainment I've provided in both doing live speaking engagements and, and in performing music uh, for good three minutes before that engagement or opportunity begins, I sent, spend those three minutes in silence recognizing where the gift came from mm -hmm. to make sure that I am not in the way of the gift. It's silence centers you. I went, I, I, as a guy, a, a guy who went through Quaker school, I mean, Jewish, but went through Quaker school education. They know silence. I mean, they, I mean, me and for worship, there's no leader of the faith. You know, there's, you sit in silence. If you want to speak, you stand up and you say your piece and you sit back down. I mean, for it, it is the most, I mean, Different religion, but it is the most centering, wonderful, especially for someone who's, you know, ADHD as I am, <laughs> to be able to that I have a choice and have to sit down in quiet for 30 mm. minutes, mm. which is which is a tough one. I can tell you that much. That is you know, I, haven't done it, I haven't done it since. I've done, I've done, I've done like quiet moments, 15 minutes, sometimes 10, like when I need it. But every Wednesday we would have that and we would all dread it. And then it wasn't until I was out of college that I realized, man, I missed that. Yeah, so it's, yeah, silence is golden. I mean, that's another cliche that's overused, but silence, there's something to it. Well, and cliches come from a truism. Mm -hmm. Cliche doesn't mean it, it's no longer valid. Cliche means that it's become part of the, the popular consciousness. Mm -hmm. and I, I would love to know where that came from. I mean, it could have been Euripides. Could, yeah. that, that could be three and a half thousand years old. Absolutely. So, so John, where's your, where's your favorite watering hole online? Where do you hang out the most? Probably LinkedIn. I love, I love how LinkedIn's coming into its own right now. I mean, they're really figuring it out and they did that. They had a brief stint in like the little stories that were like, kind of like, all right, guys, you kind of jumped off the cliff there, but they've pulled it back. And I think they're doing a great job. So I love when people say I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah, I, I hope this doesn't get me thrown off of LinkedIn, but I think the whole idea, concept, and and push of you know LinkedIn news is as hollow and useless as any other online thing that I have seen. I, I don't, don't go online. It. What's that? I don't look at it. I'm too busy I'm, talking yeah, to John it, and stuff. Yeah. And in, in the times when some of the headlines have been clickbait and the story has just been either nonsensical or clearly not researched. Mm -hmm. I have reached out directly to the editor and magically I don't get any response. Mm. So I realized, okay, you're not helping. This is not helping. So how do I help? I find posts by you and other people mm -hmm. and I make a comment like there was something on uh, two days ago about uh, emotions. And oh, I wish I had it in front of me, but I'll, I'll give you a version of what my comment was. Uh, a lot of people think that Thinking about how they feel is is something that they should definitely think about. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, I love. Oh, dang, dude. So people are reading that like three times and they realize, oh shit, it's Clemson. He's, you know what? He's. Oh, sorry. I. Now you can curse all you want. It's fine. All right. And that's probably one of the easiest. You know, it shouldn't be a curse in my opinion. <laughs> it just means poop for crying out loud. It's poop. That's right. Listen, I take what I do seriously. Yeah. I do not take myself seriously. Oh, if you, anyone who takes themselves seriously is going to end for a world, world of hurt. They are. They it's, are. Not, it's the way they live. You, you know, do what you do, do greatness that way, but then have fun with life. And the only way to have fun with life is not take yourself too seriously. Yes. I have a friend who has been a mentor to me for many years by the name of Phil Beeks. He's a leader in the insurance industry. And Phil always would, would, pinch his cheek when he said this he'd say aren't we all just terminally unique well like that too. yeah wow. aren't we just so special <laughs> <laughs> i love it and on that note let's 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 let you get back to work get you back to playing on your yeah. instruments and all that but john this has been so much fun it's been so long in the making because you know technology sucks <laughs> it's a unnecessary evil 
So I am thrilled to get you on the show. Thank you so much for being on. This is such a such a joy. Let's do it again next quarter. Absolutely. Sounds good, my friend. All right. And we'll, and we'll see everyone next week. Thank you. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast strategy of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Sean Swaim hosts a great podcast called SEO Last Week. Sean, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. Anybody who listens to SEO Last Week will get all the updates of what's going on in the world of SEO in about 15, 20 minutes or so. So that way you can stay up to date with what's going on on Google without having to dig through 60 different blogs to do so. So. That is super useful. Where can people subscribe? Hey, we try to keep things simple. You can subscribe at Marketing Podcasts with that second S dot net, or you could just search for SEO last week wherever you get your podcasts from. You heard him, folks. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.